In this video I'm going to look at another common calculation from ultrasound physics and that's something called the spatial pulse length. Okay, so when a transducer emits a pulse it uh, doesn't um, just send out a single wavelength. Usually it uh, it oscillates a few times and actually if you s look at it you'll probably see that the oscillation decreases until it gradually fades out. So if we look at the number of, of wavelengths here that are generated we, um, we might have one full wavelength there and then another wavelength here and then finally another wavelength one two three full wavelengths before the pulse dies out completely and so this is the um, the pulse generated by the ultrasound transducer and um, since it has three wave three complete wavelengths in the pulse we're going to say uh, we're going to have the number of wavelengths equal n equal to 3 in this case. So let's take a look at the um, this is actually the, the feet factor that determines the resolution of the ultrasound. So when you're trying to resolve a feature of uh, some tissue using ultrasound if it's smaller than this pulse dimension then you won't be able to resolve it very well using ultrasound. So let's take a look at how to calculate how long this pulse would be. So the formula for this and the, uh, the abbreviation for spatial pulse length is of course SPL and the formula in, let's see, uh, the formula for calculating that is n times the wavelength, the number of wavelengths times the length of each wavelength. Or um, we could also look at this in terms of the speed of propagation of sound and the frequency of the ultrasound transducer. So if I replace, if I remember that, um, <clears throat> if I remember that, uh, if I go back to my speed of propagation formula, C equals F lambda and rearrange that to solve for lambda so I divide both sides by F that cancels that I would get a uh, spatial pulse length I could replace my wavelength lambda here with C divide by F okay now it turns out that usually um, for the spatial pulse length if we uh, want to get our answer in millimeters we want to use um, the velocity of sound we want to provide units of millimeters per microsecond and for the frequency um, we want to use megahertz. And if you saw in my other video, the reason you can use megahertz is uh, a unit of megahertz is equivalent to per microsecond. Okay, Because hertz is per second, mega is 10 to the sixth, but if you're um, so per and and this is 10 to the minus 6 so mega is 10 to the 6th power this is ten, micro is 10 to the minus 6th power but if you're per micro that means the same as 10 to the 6th all right uh, so 1 megahertz is equal to 1 per microsecond so those units will cancel each other if we do it that way so let's look at the calculation here uh, spatial pulse length I will use, um, let's just use a, a repetition of three. So there's three full wavelengths in the pulse. And then 
the speed of sound in soft tissue is 1.54 millimeters per microsecond and the uh, frequency in this case the frequency of the transducer we'll just use 6 megahertz 6 megahertz and remember that's the same as 6 per microsecond so the per microseconds are going to cancel I'll be left with um, millimeters okay so let's do that on the calculator 3 times 1.54 divided by 6 equals 0.77 millimeters. So this is 0.77 millimeters. So the length, uh, this length of the full pulse, called the spatial pulse length, is uh, in this case comes out to be 0.77 millimeters, which is since it oscillates three times, uh, you multiply by the speed of propagation and divide by the frequency in megahertz of the transducer.